worship. Very glad to have all of you here with us today. Just two or three brief announcements as we get underway. First off, we are in, on the 4th of October beginning a new time set for our worship services. So we will be going to 8.30, 9.30, that will be here in the sanctuary, I'll talk more about that in a second, and 10.30. So that begins on the 4th of October, 8.30, 9.30 in the sanctuary, and 10.30. Because of our limited capacity here, we will be having a sign-up. More information will be coming out in the emails. More information will be coming out online. So please check that out to see what exactly that looks like coming up on the 4th. As those who are tuning in online can see, there's a few people that are joining us for worship. They're part of our Shakedown crew as we tune in our cameras, as we tune in our sound system, making sure that everything is just so for when we begin meeting here for worship all together on the 4th of October. Also, another thing that will be starting very soon, again on the 4th, will be our educational ministries, both for adults and for kids. Again, more information is coming out on that in the next few days, but we're very excited about how we are able to bring families together, how we are able to bring our people together in a way that is safe, in a way that um, is able to celebrate the life that we have with one another. These are the announcements that we have for today, so I'd invite wherever you are to rise as we begin our worship together. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merciful Lord, you have called us to work in your vineyard, but we confess that we have often found excuses to wait passively on the sidelines. Eager to consider and pursue our own goals, our thoughts, words, and deeds have been self-centered. We have not loved you with our whole heart soul and mind, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us and renew our hearts to focus on your undeserved love. The prophet Isaiah tells us today to return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on us, for he will abundantly pardon. Through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus for us, God has made his infinite grace known to us. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Old Testament lesson comes from Isaiah, the 55th chapter, beginning with the 6th verse. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise out of reverence for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? He said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only an hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. By the congregation to be seated. For the kids that are here, I invite you to gather on a little bit closer. I got one of my favorite things in the world, Chips Ahoy cookies. And just any cookie pretty much is my favorite thing in the whole world. Sometimes at home, maybe your parents do this as well, we give out treats for doing certain things. So if you take a medicine that tastes really bad, you get a cookie afterwards. If you get dressed for school and get your shoes on, you get a cookie before you head out the door. It's sort of a way to reward and incentivize, if you will. And when it comes time to give out those cookies, usually you give to those who work the hardest. So if one of my kids had more to do, they'd get more cookies. And if the, the one who had less to do, well, she'd maybe get less cookies. It just seems fair. But of course, I never say that it's fair. Whenever there is any difference in quantity, I'm an only child. So I didn't have any brothers and sisters growing up. I had all the cookies to myself. But oh, the fairness, it has to be just so. Because if you have to deserve exactly what you deserve. You know, that's kind of how we work at home sometimes. We look at what's fair. But I want to turn it around a little bit and ask you at home a question. Is God fair to us? Is he fair? He's just. He's perfect. Is he fair to us? Think about what we've done to God. The way that we've disobeyed him over and over again. The things that we've said against those that he has told us to respect and to love. What would be fair for us? It wouldn't be good. It certainly wouldn't be a cookie. God is 
unfair to us, and we are so thankful for that because we did not deserve to be with him forever. We don't deserve his love, but he gives it to us because of Jesus and his love for you and I. So when you think about things being fair and unfair, think about Jesus and how unfairly he gave his love to us by dying on the cross so that you and I can be with him forever. I invite those at home and those who are here with, with me to fold their hands and bow their heads and let's say a word of prayer to the Lord. Dear God, thank you for your fairness and your unfairness. Help me to share your love with others so that they may know how much you care about them. Amen. Amen. to be with you this morning. I just want to say and clarify a few things. Chips Ahoy, uh, they are in no comparison to Oreos. So Oreos, Oreos rock and they rule. Um, anyway, the Lord bless you guys today, uh, wherever you are and uh, however you receive this message today. I want you to think about uh, your first job. Think about how important you felt when you went to work. The clothes that you had on, uh, the places that you went, how you got there. Maybe you could even drive yourself. So think about uh, those things, those first jobs. If you lived in the country, uh, maybe you would think about um, walking the beans and uh, you got a machete in your hand and you're just cutting down those rogue corn stalks. I'm not sure how they got there, uh, but maybe you think about that as your first job. Maybe detasseling corn was a uh, first job for you, and you battled the grasshoppers and the spiders and the occasional bat. Uh, maybe it was cleaning grain bins and escaping within an inch of your life because it was not ventilated so very hot in there with all that moldy grain on the side, but you had your first job. If you were from town, or lucky enough to get to town, maybe you worked at the A&W or the Tasty Freeze, Maybe it was uh, packing groceries, like I did, uh, at Spies Super Value is where I was in Watertown, South Dakota, but maybe a, a local market for you. Putting the bread in the bottom and the eggs kind of in the middle and the cans on the top, you learn pretty quickly that's not how to do it. But it was your first job. Babysitting for the neighbors, uh, another great pastime. Now I want you to think about how much you got paid. Maybe $2 an hour was fair. And that was a lot compared to in the 1930s. In the 1930s, they would receive about $65 or 65 cents an hour. Uh, but you're receiving somewhere in the neighborhood of two. But if you could make three or $3.65, maybe three eighty-five dollars an hour, man, what else could you ask for? What else would you need? What couldn't you have at your disposal with that kind of uh, bling in your pocket? Would you work for pennies again? Would you work for that? Would you work for what you work for in your first job? Could you support your family? Is that something that is in your realm of imagination? Not for 
not for most of us. Even if it was an important job, there is a change of times. Too much work for too little change. Most of us can relate to the gospel lesson for today that we see in the book of Matthew. It's the workers in the vineyard, and there is this generous landowner, and the harvest is plentiful, but the workers, he's got to go out and find those workers. You can see the vines hanging there, lush and green, but underneath them, just the bunches of grapes, and the vines hang so heavy. So he's got work to do, but he can't do it by himself. So he goes to the local establishment where he would hire those day workers. And those workers would be up before the rooster crowed. They would be up waiting in line. So the landowner goes at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's zero hour. And he says, I'll take you and you and you. You guys go out into my field. You know what to do. But before you go, I want to know what I want you to know what the wages are. The wages are a denarius. A denarius, foreign to us, but it was the right wage for the day. It's the wage of a Roman soldier. It is seven cents a day. Not an hour, but seven cents a day. Who would work for seven cents an hour, let alone seven cents a day? But these workers, they felt important because they would have a job. And a job meant food in their bellies and provision for their families. So they gladly went to work while others stayed behind because they were chosen to go and work in the vineyard. But remember, the landowner, very, very generous, and that he went back a number of times during the day. And he goes back to the same place where the workers are all lined up, standing there begging for a job feeling not so important because there was no work for them to do. But the landowner goes back a number of times. He goes back at 9 o'clock in the morning. Then he goes at noon. He goes at 3. And then he goes again at 5, the 11th hour. He goes back and says, what are you guys doing here? Well, nobody's hired us. We need to work. He goes, I can see that. Well, you go, and you go, and you go. And the rest of you, not today, not right now at least. And so off they go as the workers go into the field. They almost come into the field unnoticed at a later time because everybody is working. I'll pay you whatever is right. It's not a contract. He just says, I'll take care of you. I'll do the right thing for you and your family. So go and work. But at the 11th hour, he goes back and he hires the rest that are there. What are you doing here? No one has hired us. There's only an hour left of the day. I'm sure that you don't have any work for me. Yep, you go and work in my field. I'll do what is right. I'll pay you what is right. And that as he uh, here's the whistle blow at the end of the day. He says to the workers, go and line up. Line up from those of you who are hired last to those who were hired first. And you can imagine the excitement of everybody because it was payday every day for those day workers. Seven cents uh, was a lot back then. And so for those who were hired last, you can imagine their surprise a denarius for you, and you, and you. And you can imagine how generous a whole day's wage for an hour of work. Sir, I'll work for you again. Any day, any time. Here's my number. And you can see the people who were hired the very first of the day. They said, ha ha ha, this is going to be great. What a payday for us. If those guys work for one hour and they were here just for a short period of time, a fraction of what I was here for, I can think about how much I'm going to get. A denarius for you and you and you. 
and their jaws dropped to the floor and their hearts filled up with anxiety and anger and resentment even. What are you doing? How can they who worked only one hour get the same as I'm getting? I bore the burden of the day and the heat of the sun on my back. I'm shriveled up like a dried up grape and yet this is what I get. We can relate, I think. We can relate because we know what it is like to feel like we've been treated unfairly, treated as if we don't matter. When we have worked harder or longer and better, and yet the payment is the same. How is it and why is it that we grumble and complain and our hearts are full of anger or envy and resentment when someone else is the benefactor of someone that is generous? When they get the same as we get when we have worked harder, better, longer. The work in the harvest field, it is plentiful and there is so much for us to do. And the Lord calls you today, go work in my, in my harvest field. Go work in the vineyard. You know what to do. I've gifted you in so many ways. We do understand what it is to have a jealous heart. We do know what it is to grumble and complain when things don't really come out our way. In this world of comparison, we compare our worth to what others may be able to have on their own. I'm just as good. I'm just as important. I'm just as valuable even more so. And so as we work in that harvest field with that anxious heart and a complaining mouth that goes along with the heart, our work becomes a burden instead of a blessing that God has intended that to be for us. And when it's a burden, we live in that land of comparison that leads to jealousy and jealousy to envy. And envy then leads to entitlement we often feel like we're entitled to more. Even from the Lord. That as workers together in the harvest field, it's not so much about you. It's not so much about us even. It is about the harvest because that is what is right. The Lord offers to those who work tirelessly and a number of you uh, as uh, you're here today or you are watching, uh, you feel that way and you feel like maybe others have gotten more, maybe more than what they deserve. But instead of being happy for them and joyous, good for you, and really meaning it, those words just come out so easily for us. Good for you, but underneath it's, I wish I could have what they have. The Lord blesses us today. But we grow up in a different world, in a different place, at a different time. I remember in um, my years of growing up, we sat around the dinner table. The uh, prized possession was a jar of pitted cherries. And those cherries that had the pits in them, they were in this gorgeous purple liquid. My mom would dish them out, five for you, five for you, five for you. We all knew Five was the number because we counted them. And if somebody was fast enough to put a grape or a, a cherry in their mouth first, we counted the pits afterwards. Hey, he got more. She got more. If you really knew what you were doing, you would swallow a pit or two. You'd sacrifice so that when your brothers and sisters counted the pits at the end, then you might be able to receive more. That is not right. It is not fair. But that is the world that we live in. It is the world that Jesus speaks into today. 
He bears the burden of all of our sinfulness, all of our complaining, all of our grumbling, all of our faults, all of our sins, our inadequacies, the things that we have done wrong to each other, and what a mess we've made of our own life. That God today sends Jesus to bear that burden for us, to forgive us, to call us into his service, to work for him in his kingdom. It's not so much about the everyday work, but it is about the goal of the harvest. God says, I have provided for you in so many ways. You thought about your first job and how he provided for you then. Think today about what you have, not about what you do not have. Think about the blessings that he pours out, that we would have a heart today of gratitude, not just for a paycheck, not just for a house or for a car or for some things on the fringe of life for us, but think about the most important thing. That's his love for you. He values you enough to give his life for you. A value that is beyond compare. Today the Lord blesses us in his kingdom. Philippians chapter 4 says, whatever is right, whatever is just, whatever is fair, whatever is lovely, think about such things today. We think about a God who is always right, even what doesn't seem fair to us. And you've heard already today that his love for us is unfair and a feeling of gratitude is ours because of that. That we don't deserve what he offers and what he gives generously, humbly, dying upon the cross. Think about the thief on the cross as he hangs there at the 11th hour. Remember me in your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Today you will be with me in paradise. You and you and you. Go and work in the vineyard and I'll pay you what is right. Salvation is yours through Jesus Christ. Amen. Having heard God's word today, let's stand and speak the words of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We thank you again for uh, your um, compassion and your generosity as that you give of uh, the best that you have, uh, whether that's finances, uh, your time, your energy, and your prayers. Uh, Continue to do that as the Lord blesses us, that he might give us a spirit of gratitude, that we would have one of compassion and encouragement, a great blessing for us today as we worship him who gives us all things that are needful. We pray. Gracious Lord, you call us into your vineyard. Strengthen all of us in your church around the world that we may use the time, abilities, and resources that you so generously provide to so many as you bring them to saving faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, As your thoughts are not our thoughts, nor your ways our ways, so inform the hearts and minds of those who make, administer, and judge the laws for citizens throughout the world. Instill in them a clear understanding of your will, so that they may govern societies in justice and live peaceably with neighboring states and nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for Troy Hubley today 
as he is made your precious child through the waters of holy baptism this day, that he may grow in grace and knowledge of who you are and all that you've done that you provided for him at uh, the moment of his conception and provide for him even still. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, pour out your mercy on all those who are in danger or suffering loss due to wildfires or hurricanes. Mercifully remember all those whose lives and property are threatened, especially those who place their own lives in uh, danger to save the lives and property of others. Grant your comfort to those who are in mourning and to those who anxiously await word on the fate of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear the cries of all who call out to you for comfort, healing, and relief. We pray for Benjamin Berry, and we remember Scott Eastland today. Pray for Kurt Gates and Todd Folkerts, for Ingrid Dixon, and so many others that are on our hearts and minds. Visit and relieve each of them from the ailments according to your gracious will that you always provide for your workers in your vineyard. As we are able, use us as instruments in that same vineyard to increase their sense of peace and joy. Help us to encourage with humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us commitment and contentment, Lord, that trusting in your mercy we may delight in your will where the last are made first by your generosity and grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor, and grant to you his peace. Amen.